Shalom. I'll be making a third video after all in this series. And I'm walking in Rotterdam now, as you can see behind me. Uh, well, I was talking about marks of victimhood. And now I want you to remember Job. I'm talking about the book of Job. Job, the rich man, whom the Lord allowed Satan to attack him and to rob him of all his children, his wealth, his marriage. Suffered a lot, whose friends began to accuse him that what happened to him was his own fault. Job was not aware of what was happening in, in the spirit. Yes, Job. And listen, I made a YouTube series about Job in detail two years back. I believe it was two years or one and a half years back, so watch it on my channel. What I want to say about Job now is that Job had marks of victimhood upon him before Satan was motivated to go against him. You see? And um, maybe you can sit around here, I'm not sure. But, okay, I'll go here. And, or, okay, I'll just sit somewhere around here. Look, Satan knows that he can is limited. So he cannot just attack anyone. He needs to have, o have open doors before he can do his dirty job. Right? So now, well, let's. I'm just going to sit on the bench over here. All right. So he needs an open door before he can do his dirty job. You had a lot of people around Job that were, that were envious of him and were accusing him. So Job had multiple marks of victimhood upon his life. But he was not aware of it. He didn't have all this spiritual knowledge. Okay, He didn't have all these revelations. You see? And those marks of victimhood, you see, those spells that were upon him, it began to influence his behavior. Job began to be afraid of the well-being of his children, and also began to practice ritual sacrifice of animals to appease the Most High. Now, the Most High never required appeasement in, in the form of animal sacrifice. That was something pagan. Yet, because of the accusations that were upon Job, the lives of his children were influenced, and this impacted him to think that I need to appease the Lord so that the Lord won't lash out against my children. So, without Job being aware of it, Job agreed with darkness. Job uh, agreed with a satanic agreement against himself. And when he did that, you see, Satan, uh, Satan and all his demons had an open door to just go against his life. It was the Most High that placed a restriction upon the devil. You see? So if the Most High did not place that restriction upon the devil, he would have taken Job out completely. That's how serious this is, guys. You see? And the Lord allowed all of this to happen. But it's also a lesson for us. You see? Because when you read the book of Job, most of the book contains conversations between Job and his three friends. I call them friends. I better call them frenemies. Enemies, uh, enemies on a disguise as a friend. As friends, because one of those friends, you can you read it in the book of Job, even said that an evil spirit appeared unto him and he was frightened about, about the spirit, but that spirit began to teach him spiritual insight that a human being can never be pure before the Most High. And that friend told the story unto Job and all those others, and, and he even said, based upon where the demon spirit revealed unto him, Job, you are guilty. So that friend admitted that he was under demonic influence, 
yet he didn't care about that. He said, based upon this amount of influence, what I've learned from it, you're guilty, Job. And you see, you have a lot of people out there. You also have many churches, many preachers, and many ministries who get their doctrine from demons. Yes, they do. And those and they use those doctrines of demons upon their concrete con con upon the congregation. So you might be thinking that you are receiving the word of God over there, but you're not receiving the word of God. You're, re you're receiving the teachings of devils, mixed with the traditions of men, because the teachings of devils always need the traditions of men in order to appeal to others. Nobody in their right mind would accept doctrines of devils, because they're very absurd and contrary to our human well-being. But when you mix it with human traditions, traditions that people are emotionally attached to, a dangerous combination, especially when they do it in the name of Jesus. It happens, guys. So don't look outside for danger. There's a lot of danger inside the Christian community these days. You see, the body of Christ must awaken and realize these things. Okay? Me, guys, I became very strict in this. If a congregation tolerates a Jezebel spirit or an Ahab spirit or any kind of uh, evil spirits in their midst for a long time, I'm out of there. If I notice that the pastor and the deacons, if I notice that they are, are teaching the traditions of men and the uh, doctrines of demons, and they do it in the name of Jesus, they're twisting scripture. They're using emotional um, harassment on the people. When I notice these things, guys, I'm out. I'm out of there. You know, in my late teenage years, I might have thought, no, I should stay. I should stay to make things better or to have a good influence. But now I know this, I can't do that. You see, if they've agreed with, uh, with evil, then, and they are blinded by their agreement, then you trying to get them out of that agreement, you see, you'll be not only putting yourself, also others in danger, because now, even if they listen to you, now you will get negative people around you that will also go along with you into your future. So I'm not doing that, you see. And um, it's not only, only that, if, if there are relatives or so-called family members, if whether they have a mark of victimhood or not, you see, when they agree with negativity and they persist in it, I, I, I back off from them. You know why? Because this is what I've realized. When you are agreeing with Christ Jesus and they are agreeing with negativity, then every time they are around you, those demons that are attached to them will become uncomfortable with you. And this feeling of discomfort that demons will send out to their, to their hosts that they are using. So then they become uncomfortable with you. But they can never explain why. So they will, in their own human reasoning, look for some reason to be offended with you. So they will, will cooperate with those evil spirits against you. And, off, and when after a while, you see, they will try to infect you with the same negativity they are agreeing with. And when they realize this is not happening, they will build, they, I'm not talking about the demons, they, the humans, who are with evil, they will begin to bite you and attack you, literally. I mean, I mean biting, sometimes it's literally, if they're completely out of your mind, but spiritually and emotionally biting you, they'll do it. And this will go on for years and years, guys. You see, it will not get any better. So that's why, guys, every day you wake up, give praise to the Most High, thank Him. Not because He needs your thanksgiving, no, because thanksgiving empowers you. Thanksgiving empowers you, thanksgiving um, is also, it attaches you to His Word. Thanksgiving is very powerful, guys. You don't give thanks out of obligation, you give thanks because it's the right and natural thing to do. Okay? And besides giving thanks, you know, you know, speak His promises upon your life, upon every circumstance. You see, pray about everything, worry about nothing. I, re I repeat the last thing, worry about nothing. You see? Because 
worrying itself is a form of black magic if you're not if you're not aware of it when you worry you are basically you are agreeing with an accusation against the most high and against other people in a certain circumstance and you focus on a problem by focusing upon a problem you are attaching yourself to the problem and every time you attach yourself to a problem you are always at atta- you are always you know you're always, let me say, you're always putting, placing a mark of, of a of victim upon someone. And once you do this over and over again, it's the same as black magic, guys. Or better said, it is black magic, if you're, if you're not aware of it. There's also a way that we victimize others by worrying. Worrying is, I, just, I will just say it is black magic. When you keep on worrying, you're also placing marks of victim upon those around you. You see? God's promises are rich and wealthy enough to take care of all your needs and all your wants. Okay? So worry should be non-existent for believers. In my life, guys, worry is non-existent. Am I saying I'm never attacked by worry? Am I saying that I can never, I don't have my down moments? Yes, I do. But just as the scripture says, the righteous man falleth seven times, though he rises again. You see? The same manner, guys. Worry I've unlearned it because you cannot say I'm not going to worry anymore. I believe Christ. Yes, you can do that, but you have to be real. You are accustomed to worrying. You are accustomed to to avoid some because listen, when you have apathy, when you have this attitude, I don't care. I don't care about other people. I don't care about other people's problems. Your problem, I don't care. Many people feel empowered by the I don't care attitude, but the I don't care attitude is also a form of worrying. You don't want any responsibility because you are focused upon the flesh, upon your own uh, effort, upon your own ability, and your own ability will always fall short. And to avoid that truth and avoid your past failures in your own efforts, the most I ne- never even wanted you to operate from your own effort, but avoid all of that, you have this I don't care attitude. That's also worrying. Okay? All these things you need to be delivered from. So agree with Christ and He'll deliver you from worrying. You have to unlearn worrying, guys. Unlearn it. You have to unlearn everything you were taught that is not in line with Christ Jesus. You have to do it. You have to unlearn it. You see? And the Holy Spirit will guide you and the Holy Spirit will work it out through you. So trust upon His grace. Well, I believe this is the last video in this series, Removing Marks of Victimhood. And if you have any questions, for real, just ask them. And besides that, I want you also to study the word, pray, fast, make decrees, decorations, and give commands in the Spirit. That all being said, guys, I'm out. For those that are celebrating the Shabbat, the Shabbat will begin today at sunset. So, Shabbat Shalom.